Jared Poland. Fronos Photo. Dot com. And in this video, I want to show you some real world examples of using the new Sony A9 version 5.0 firmware, which gives you real time tracking along with real time IAF, meaning in the past I had to hold down a back button and then the shutter button when I wanted to shoot in order to get it to track the eye. In this case, I hold the shutter button halfway down and it's locking onto the subject, tracking them, and it will find the eye when they get close enough. Now, the real world situation was the Philadelphia Flyers. I was able to get a credential for the very last home game that they had of the season. I was lucky enough to get a photo hole to shoot through for the third period, and that's great because it gives me a clean shot without having to shoot through the glass. But let's look at this in action. So here we go, check this out. It just acquires. You see that? Boom. It nails the subject basically every time. Now what you're seeing is the electronic viewfinder of the Sony A9. It's all interlaced, it's all mumbo jumboed, it's not as good looking as when we record the Z6 and the Z7, and it also doesn't give us the information overlay when my eye is up to the electronic viewfinder. But we do show you some samples later on in this video where it's showing you the real-time tracking AF because we used an external monitor so we could record the box so you could see it. In this case, continuous autofocus shooting 12 12 frames a second with the A9, not shooting in the 20 frames a second, which gives you 12 bit. I just, 12 frames a second is pretty darn fast. And I know most sports photographers are shooting JPEG all the time, but I just wanted to shoot the 12 frames and not the 20. So you saw how fast that acquired. Just look, it acquires a subject, boom, and it allows you to just shoot. Whereas in the past, let me go over here to Lightroom and show you stuff from, uh, you know, somewhere around 2000. Uh, actually, it's film, so maybe around 99-ish is when I would have shot this. Of course, I'm shooting with a, an F5 at the time, but it just shows you that when the subject was out of the frame and then they come into the frame, it made it much more difficult to try and lock onto them using continuous focus. And I know this is an extreme example because it's super long time ago, but it still happens today even with my D5. I can find that if the subject's not there, it can back focus, it can miss, it can happen with any camera, but in this case, now with the new auto-focusing systems that we have here, I'm locked in on Voracek, watch this action. Click, 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 here's the photos. See that, see how fast that happens? Let me go back and show you that. Just look at this, you saw how fast it happens? He shoots, it's locked onto him as he's moving, so you can get the photo. Another photo, another photo, and you get the action just like that. Whereas in the past, you had to worry that as a subject moved, it may not track them as well, or if you were just doing lock on for whatever reason, like a single focus point and they moved, this has been a big problem when I was shooting baseball and you would get the pitcher and as soon as they would move, it back focuses. That's one of the problems I've had with all the, like the D4, the D4S and the D5 is you have a pitcher. You're, you're not even locked on, you're in continuous and as they go into their motion, it starts to back focus because the dynamic area just misses as they move. In this case, that's not really happening with this Sony at all. And this is great because when Giroud came closer, it locked in on his eye. And so that's where IAF comes in handy. Same thing, you just get the eye right through the, uh, the visor, boom, nailed it. And then one of the more tougher things is a goalie because he's got this cage on in front of him and I waited to find my composition, get the focus, there, he turned, and I captured the action, uh, it's not really action, but as he turned, I waited, waited, boom, got it. And you can see right there that it's in focus. Now, in the old days, you spent a lot of time trying to get the eye, and it would lock in on the cage. Or in this case, I, I was able to actually get it. I don't recall if I switched to manual focus to do this at the time, but this was done with a D5 and uh, Ilford 3200 speed film. Uh, and then this is a photo so that you can zoom in and see that we nailed the eye right where, I, I could brighten it up later actually, just go in here and brighten it up, but it nailed the eye. And same thing right here, right through the visor, it nailed the guy's eye again. Here's the example of the IAF working and the continuous focus working of the A9. You see as I'm swinging it, I'm leaving the frame totally and it's acquiring my eye every time I come back. I'm showing you this again because it's so damn good. Look at that, out of the frame, in the frame out of the frame, in the frame. And it's nailing the eye every single 
time. It's a very difficult thing to do, and the camera did it, because this is a real world example where I was in the gym, the guy's kettlebell, kettlebell swinging, left the frame, came back in the frame, and I hit it. Now, this is so difficult to do with a regular DSLR or basically any other camera that doesn't have this real-time tracking in it because when the subject leaves the frame, you don't know where they're coming back. So you have to guess where the focusing point's gonna be. You have to hope that it's gonna quickly find the eye. Oh, and by the way, this image that's up on the screen right now was at 1.8. There's no way in hell with the D5 and let's say the 105-14 shot at 1.8, continuous focus, that I'd be able to get this guy in focus if he left the frame and came back. I could try and lock on in single focus, but even at 1.8, there's no way in hell that I'm gonna get it sharp because it's gonna miss. There's no way I could nail that same spot. I'm gonna move and he's gonna move. So this auto-focusing system is freaking fantastic. Now let's show you some of the game action where I, watch this, watch this. I'm tracking, the subject tracking, 24 pictures in a row. Look at that, 24 pictures in a row. And the only one that missed slightly, and it's not even like it missed by a ton, was this last picture. The last picture is the only one where it slightly went out. Look at this, 24 shots in a row as he's moving through the frame. It is locking on and staying with him even as he moves to the one side of the frame because I was not fast enough to get my composition to chase him back to the middle, which is where I normally have my focusing point, and it found it the entire time. Now, I do understand that Nikon in my D5 has 3D tracking, which they took out in the Z6 and the Z7. I never really liked the 3D tracking because it seemed to focus in on the closest thing, where it would get the subject that got in the way, or it would focus on the guy's stick or his feet instead of his chest and his face. And I didn't notice that happening with the A9's firmware. It allowed me to just focus on reacting to capture the moment because I'm not waiting for the autofocus. Whereas with the older cameras, the first thing I need to do is move the focusing point, then react to capture the moment. When I need to just, with the A9, I just react because the focusing point, for the most part, is going exactly where it needs to be without me having to think about it. In this hockey situation, the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, they're not changing at all because it's even lighting across the board. That's one thing I don't have to worry about. I put the focusing point somewhere higher up in the frame, usually in the middle, but a little higher so that it finds the face. But when I start holding the button halfway down, it acquires the subject. If I ever need to move the focusing point to, to, to juice the system, I move it. But most of the time, I don't even need to move it at all because it's finding exactly what I want it to find. Now, one of the concerns I have for allowing the camera to do the autofocus for me and track the subject is that what happens if it shifts to the wrong subject and then I just miss the focus altogether and I miss the action? Well, to be honest with you, I'm gonna miss more stuff by not using this, by using the old method with my D5, dynamic area autofocus, and having the shift and move, I'm gonna miss more shots because I'm shifting and moving than just reacting with this autofocus system. This is where the future is going. Sony has it down pat. This is insane for shooting action. The fact that I can just focus in on composition because everything else is set. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO is set. Autofocus, for the most part, is just tracking everything it needs to track and I can just worry about shooting and reacting as I see it happen. Just like when the goalie turned his head, I didn't have to recompose or change the focusing point because the camera knew that it wanted to hit the eye. Now, to give you another example here, I also took the Z6 out there from the Nikon to shoot, but this time through the glass, and that's something right there, this shot, it didn't acquire focus and it missed. This is something where the A9 would have picked up the focus much quicker. Now I understand that this is a Z6, but also the Z7 would have had the same problem. And of course the A9 is a lot more expensive, but these are the offerings. Th this isn't gonna happen. Even, even the D5 would have had an issue in that situation that I just showed you. It would have been on the goalie, then the other guy would have come in. It probably wouldn't have acquired like the A9 would have acquired as well. So more action, guy goes into the net, boom, it nails, oh God, I stopped it at the perfect time. Oh, I'm so good at this. That's really exactly where I shot it, right there. I hit the shutter, that's funny. I hit the space bar at the exact time that I shot the photo because it just felt like the right time to shoot. You just feel that stuff out. But it didn't find uh, Jordan Stahl, I think is who that is. It didn't find this guy over here. It found the subject amongst all of the other players right there. 
Same thing right here. Watch this. It's focused in on uh, 59, but then these players, they come into the frame and quickly it acquires it. And, and I didn't have to move the focusing points. I just had to focus in on shooting and capturing the moment. Here, here's a couple of examples. Like this was Claude Giroux during pregame. It didn't focus in on the stick. It didn't jump to the stick. It stayed locked on him the whole time. Similar to this, it was on Claude Giroux as he was skating and it stayed on him and didn't move over to whoever number nine is. And at this point, I don't know who number nine was. Now that's not to say that other cameras like the 1DX Mark II don't have that lock on option where it locks on and it doesn't shift out of the way. But again, I don't have to think, I just have to react and let this do what it's going to do. Now, if you're looking for a quick way to start editing your RAW files or a great starting point, check out the 14 custom Lightroom presets that we created called FroPack One. Go to fronosphoto.com slash presets. You can play with the sliders before, after, before, after. Yep, if you decide you wanna pick them up, hit add to cart, they're 40% off right now, which makes them 30 bucks instead of 50 bucks at fronosphoto.com slash presets. Now let's wrap up this part right here with a couple of more shots. Um, Oh yeah, there it was. Watch this. I'm focused in on this guy skating up the ice. Then all of a sudden, he comes into the frame and it nailed him. That is the point that I'm trying to make here. The fact that it just picks up the subject. There it's on that guy at a distance. Then this guy, ooh, I shift over to him and it acquired him without me having to do very much. So this is where the future is going. And honestly, on Sony's side, this is the present. It's not in all of their cameras yet. It's in the A6400, it's in the, the A9, it's not in the A7R3 and the A7 III at this point, but you can just see that they're gonna start building this functionality into all of their cameras. Now, this isn't going to make the amateur photographer a ton better because there's still composition, there's still exposure that goes into it, but it's gonna make the pros even better because now you can just react to the moment that's happening and not have to worry about the focus as much. And if you're gonna deny this technology and say that it's more, that you gotta be like the old school shooters and you can't use the technology here, then you just need to stop worrying and, and go back to the old days because the old days are gone. You need to use the technology that you have in front of you today to help make you a better photographer, to help capture the moments that are in front of you. So that is it. That's the Sony A9 firmware. It's fantastic. It changes the way that you shoot. IAF, lock on tracking for sports. If it works this well in one of the fastest moving sports in the world, ice hockey, imagine what it's gonna do for just about everything else. So let me know what you guys think down below. Leave some comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.